Hello everyone, this is Muted and Nuts and today we'll be continuing our beginner friendly Road to SCP video series. Today we'll be looking at another hack the box machine that is Tata Source. Tata Source is based on Linux and the difficulty is medium so let's just get started. So first thing what I always do is I run an auto recon scan. If you guys don't know what auto recon is, it's an enumeration tool. It's gonna do few nmap scans at first on the target machine and based on the open ports and services it's gonna do additional scans on them. So 95% of the time it works really great, at times you have to manually enumerate things further so that's why I always know how to run your commands manually as well. So I'll be running this as root so that's why I'll be giving sudo over here because I'm running the box as curly and not root. I'll be giving python3 over here in order to run this autorecon.py file. I'll be giving the target IP address at this 10.10.10.888 in the case of data source. I'll be giving the O switch for the output directory and the output uh, directory location where I want to save the scan result. So obviously, I uh, you know the scan takes a long time to execute. So I've already executed. You know, I've already I did already run the scan and let's just look at the scan result. So first thing what I do is I look at the full TCP and map scan because that that's where your important you know enumeration results lies. So obviously you can check out the other scans as well. But first thing I pre uh, usually prefer to go and check for the full TCP and map. So if you see over here, we only have one port open that is port 80 running HTTP service and there's some web server, Apache web server that is 2418. So you can check out for this version and search point and see if you get something but I don't think there's anything present. We'll just quickly go and update our cherry tree over here and we'll just enter port 80 because that's one port we know that is open and we can enumerate this. So obviously over here we see some supported methods that's like a regular method. I don't see any you know vulnerable method over here like put or something like that, delete. And we do have a robots.txt file over here. It says for that. Okay, just a quick uh, short summary kind of like these things are present. And obviously I don't think there's anything else present over here. So we can just move on from now. And we have board 80. What we can do is quickly, we can look at the robots.txt because it was mentioned over there. Autorecon does a separate robots.txt scan. And this is what it looks like. And we can check for this on the page itself. But before that, let's just look at the port 80 web page and see if we get something over here. It says welcome to Tata source and there's some text over here in the shape of some source. So there's nothing over here interesting. If you look at it, there are no comments or anything. If you go below, because this is not the end, right? If you go below and you see something which says carry on, nothing to see here. Okay, so I don't think there's anything present over here. What we can do is we can keep this thing as it is and uh, you know, yeah. So we can check out for the robots.txt. So we can just do robots.txt and we do have this thing over here. So disallow and there are a few entries over here. That does not mean that these entries are, you know, restricted for us. It just says disallow for the crawlers like Google or something. So that whenever they see, they are like, oh, hey, you know what? We are going to follow the rules and it says disallow. So we're not going to go and enumerate this. So uh, show some result for, uh, which includes this uh, particular path or something like that. So that's how robots.txt works. So in our case, we can just check for each and everything. Obviously, when I do the box first, obviously I'll be checking for each and everything. But I don't think the uh, others are present over here. So if you just do this quickly, so let's just enter the IP and enter this part. It says not found. So if you look at this interesting part over here, which says monster 304. So if you look at that, we do get a web application over here which says start a source and something. So you can click around and play with it. If you try to log in registration, it says not found. So what we can do is quickly we have something which says 304 and here it says something like, you know, you can go to the pages manager to edit this page. So probably if we can edit this particular page, we can get a reverse shell or something like that, right? So you can just quickly go to pages manager and we do have monster over here. It says username, password. So it says over here Monstra version 3.0.4. So 3.0.4. So what we can do is we can just do a quick search ploy on this Monstra. We can enter the version number. We can just leave Monstra to see if we get something. So we do have multiple 3.0.4 ones. Oh, okay, over here. So it says CMS 3.0.4 persistent cross site scripting. I don't think we require XSS. And it says over here arbitrary file upload. And there is one which says arbitrary file upload, remote code execution. So this probably looks interesting and it says authenticated over here. So in short, you need to be authenticated in order to get this thing working. Authenticated means 
you have to have your credentials valid credentials present and you need to get inside the box okay so what we can do is we can just quickly go and copy this thing for now and we can go to our exploit directory and we'll do a source exploit with m switch that is mirror and it's going to copy that uh, exploit into our current working directory that is exploit so let's just do that and let's just go back to the expert directory and look at that particular page over here it may be a bit confusing to look at but over here it says poc login with the valid credentials of an editor so probably we require valid credentials and it says select files from option and then probably okay let's just look into this in a bit but if you want to log in over here we can try for the default credentials like uh, you know you can go obviously there is some vendor specific web application i mentioned in the previous videos as well if there is vendor or an open source web application which is being maintained by version industry and everything you can go on google and check for uh, you know search exploit sorry you can check for monstra default credentials but i was not able to find any but uh, you can check for default credentials as well you can check for like admin 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 password and all these kind of things you can just try and play around and see if that is the thing and if you actually type admin admin over here it does let you in inside this particular application and it says admin welcome back admin so in short we'll just follow up with that particular poc over here and see how this thing works so obviously we have logged in so first step is complete second step select files from option and then content okay in content you could click files and we do have this files manager and we do have an upload functionality so most likely it's hinting that you can have this upload functionality you know you can have a php file over here and you can execute it by clicking on it so it's you know we do have this particular php page over here so you can just copy it and we can just enter something like uh something like muted and nuts okay just keep it simple muted and nuts php so we'll do that and we can paste this so obviously we do have uh this particular command this is the same command what we use like echo system cmd get command but for some reason the poc is stating that you use this only so probably we'll just try using that first because if that user itself the person who has created this poc is saying use this so maybe there's some reason okay or maybe not okay but you know first thing is always try to use what is already present in the poc just modify a few things if required but i don't think we need to modify anything we can just give this file and give a cmd parameter and give a command to it or we could have given just php echo system and you know request and that particular command it works either way so what we can do we can just format it a bit we can remove the additional spaces we have muted and nuts php and over here it says you can also use php 7 okay so let's just try doing this first but well, you know unfortunately this thing is not going to work let's just do this select file and let's just go to exploit okay and upload it says forbidden file type so in short it did not let us upload with php so now we can try and you know rename this to php7 and let's just try uploading it now and it says file not uploaded for some reason it says file not uploaded but there is a catch over here and the thing is that you know you cannot write in this particular directory that is uploads this path right the uploads path you cannot write over there so what we'll just quickly do is we'll just go monstra and go to the github page because this is actually an open so obviously you can just enter monster because you all may not know if it is actually available on github so you can go to monster you can go to issues over here and over here there are like multiple security vulnerabilities and all these things mentioned over here and if we closely look at things it says directory traversal vulnerability is present over here in monster you can check for that and okay so we do have this directory traversal vulnerability over here and it says that in short you can go back to a directory okay and you can try uh, it's basically that i hope you guys know what directory path traversal is so directory traversal nothing but you're going behind directories one on one so obviously you can try for lfis over here with this equal to sign or and you know you can see if this lfi actually works but let, i think there's a path traversal vulnerability so you can do that over here and see if this thing actually works okay so what we'll try to do is if you look at the part traversal format it's a bit different over here because there are like multiple dots usually we have like forward slash 
and few dots and then forward slashes. So this is something different. So we can just try this as it is. We are already in, in admin index PHP. Okay, ID, okay. So we can just copy this thing over here and we can paste it with this admin. So make sure you line this up properly. Don't make an error over here. So let's just do that. And it actually works. So the part traversal actually works, directory traversal and traversal, sorry. Uh, and you can actually go back to this particular directories over here. So probably our um, uploads folder, we came back like one, two, three, four, six uh, directories back, I guess. And what we can do is we can just go and reduce this and go back one by one. So we can just do this and press enter. We come back one directory that is we came back from uploads. So we have assets over here, themes, uploads. And what we can do is we can keep going back. We can do this again. And we come back over here where there is nothing present. Oh my bad, I think I did not enter this correctly. So we come back again and we have admin, backups, boot, engine, libraries, plugin, and so on. We do have the change log over here as well. So you can check for that and see if, you know, but obviously we do have the version number. So I don't think that's important. Let's just do it again. We come back again and it says WP over here. There's some interesting directory over here, WP. We can click on that and enumerate, but I don't, uh, that's, you know, probably we'll check that out later, but let's just go back one more directory. And we come over here to this web service directory, okay? So over here, it's web service directory and robots.txt is nothing but this particular thing. So after, this is a root directory for our applications. So we do have this application present over here that is, you know, your host, sorry. And we do have this directory over here. And over here, we did see robots.txt present, right? So this is what it looks like. So if we just try and upload, okay, let's just go back to that WP directory. And let's just try uploading a file over here and see if this thing actually works. If we try to upload video to nuts PHP, let's just try uploading. And if you do that, it for some reason did not give us anything. I'm not sure, I don't think it got uploaded. So what we'll try to do is we'll just go back to this web service directory. Let's just select this file, mutatenuts.php and let's just try and click upload. So once you click upload away, it says file was uploaded. So this file we were in which directory, obviously you just ensure that this is a bit buggy. So when you, you know, actually upload a file, this thing format changes away and you do not get any directory traversal. So if you go back to this particular format, we do have this mutated nuts PHP 7 file. And over here it mentions that, you know, you can click on the file and add CMD to it and you can add OMI, time, date, etc. and so on. So let's just do that. Let's just click on this and we can just give this for parameter. We'll give the CMD parameter because this was present in the file, right? CMD, make sure you give that and then we can give something like OMI. So if you do that, we get something like WW data. We can even do the host name over here and it says start our source. So that means we have successful remote command execution over here. So we can probably change this thing, you know, route it to burp and burp suit can actually, you know, you can intercept that request and, you know, try, or probably you can change it, send it to repeater and get a Python reverse shell done or something like that. I'm sure Python is present in this box. So let's just look at that. I'm entering the plus because URL encoding, otherwise it will not detect. So user bin Python is actually present. So we got RCE present. We can also replace this entire page with our PHP reverse shell from Pentest Monkey. So we can do that PHP reverse shell. So we can get this particular shell as well, I guess, and you can do that or you can, you know, just use burp suit. So I'll just require this. Okay. So coming to this, since we got RC over here, I'll just take a, you know, I will not probably go and get a system shell, sorry, not system, but user shell over here. We'll just look at the other way you can do this box. So this was actually an unintended path over here for this particular box. That's why that uploads folder was made, uh, sorry, it was not writable. Probably root has the access or something like that. So this was how it was done with this monster page. So let's just log out. I don't think we require this monster anymore. 
and we'll just look into this in a different way so obviously we saw wp right web services and we saw something like wp so obviously if we do not find anything over there with directory traversal we can just go back to our scans over here and obviously because okay before that we can just run a go buster scan so we can check for the go buster scan which was already done by default and we do see that we get index and web services that's it we do not get anything else over here so what we can do is we do have web services right and we did see web services had that particular monstra application over here so what we can do is we can do another go buster scan with this path over here okay so let's just try doing that but for that we can locate for the small txt over here and we can do that and get the small txt okay this is the word list which we'll use so we'll do go buster dir direct directory scan we'll be giving the use switch for the url 10 10 10 88 we'll be giving web services over here and then we'll be giving the word list that is small txt you can give the extensions that is php uh txt sh pl py the ones which are like more common in linux and also we can give html okay so something like that we can give cgi as well we can give the o switch for go buster and web uh, scan or something like that and something like sma ext txt just you know to make sure that you know you understand if you are referring to the scan later if if you sorry if you're enumerating the scan like you know you're going on enumerating and you're going on enumerating the box and then you know some point of time it may get troublesome and confusing that what was the scan about so just me like this is what i follow naming convention so you can run the scan we can give the t switch for threads and probably enter something like 40 default is 10 it will run like four times faster over here with 40 threads okay so you can do that and hit enter and i did already execute the scan so i'm not going to do it again so let's just look at this cobus scan and we do see that okay this was a Okay, let's just go to web services and we do get this WP present over here. So if you look at WP over here and if you see, we do not get something, uh, we do get something, but it's like some error or article not found. So what we can do is we have WP present over here and another directory. You can do another scan go buster by giving WP as well. So just add WP over here. and we can give another additional scan and this would be something like this so we do see like you know there's a wp admin sign up trace back and wp content a lot of things present over here so what we can do is we can try fixing this page over here uh, or what we can do is we we do know that we have this wp contents present probably we can run a wp scan so let's just do that quickly so we can do wp and i guess url and we'll be giving http and we'll be giving the path that is 10.10.10.88 in the okay web services and services wp and we can do this scan and we can try and see if we get something over here let's just see if the scan works so okay let's just press n for now And it says started URL web services and in short it did find WP present over here. So WP is actually running. So obviously it's going to enumerate few things and the scan, you know, it got over very fast, like very quickly. And I don't think you got anything over here. So what we'll do is we'll just quickly find out uh, another things over here in WP scan. So let's just go to WP scan. And I think this version got updated. So probably, you know, you have to actually force and do an aggressive scan. So let's just do WP scan help. And if we go over here, we need this E switch, right? To enumerate things over here. So obviously, yeah, by default, we use WP and E. But over here, we'll require additional things to do. That is write the AP, that is use all plugins over here all ap for all plugins and then use this particular plugins detection mode that is aggressive so probably use that so something like plugins detection and give the mode that is aggressive so once we do this the scan is going to take like around 40 minutes or something to complete and you'll get something interesting over there there's some vulnerable plugin or something like that so that's how there's an update on wp scan i guess so probably usually i just use the e switch 
so you know you get multiple things over your enumerator like almost all the things but over here we need to give like all plugins and we need to give a plugins detection aggressive scan so i did already execute this scan so let's just look at this wp scan over here i have saved this and because it takes quite some time like it may take around let's just try running it obviously it's gonna run I did update it recently, by the way, it's not because of this update. So just FYI. Okay, so we do have the scan over here. And if we look over here, it says that, you know, there's an error saying this version is out of date. The latest version is 4.0.5. So in short, the version it says is 2.3.10. So what we can do is we can do a search exploit against this thing. Or oh, before that, it's it actually shows the readme of this uh, Gual GB. So probably this is like a plugin. So let's just copy this and go over here. And if you look over here, it says stable tag 2.3.10. And probably if you go down, scroll below over here, there's a change log present. And in the change log, there is something like 1.5.3. But over here, it says 2.3.10. And if you look at this, it says change from 153 to 2310 to trick WP scan. So probably this was done by the creator of the box, you know, just, you know, to have this thing not caught up in the WP scan for some reason. But I think it was an older version. So any which way it did uh, get caught. And this is what is the actual version, I guess. So 153. So what we'll do is we'll just look. Okay, this scan is on. I think we can leave it on. Or we, okay, let's just go over here. Let's just go and do a search ploit and equal. Okay. So we do see over here, we have this plugin present over here for 153. This is the same one which is present over here. We do have that and it says remote file inclusion. So that's an RFI present over here. So if you guys don't know what our RFI is, it's basically like an LFI but it's remote. So in short, LFI is like local. So if there is a web application which has LFI, you need to include a local file that is from the target machine itself. Okay, so if we just have a quick look over here. So if there is a web application running over here, that is something like Tata source, something like that, okay. So now if this thing is particularly running over here, so LFI would mean you need to include a file which is already present in this particular box. But RFI means you can include a file which is remotely present. So that is something like you can have this particular file over here from this box and then this particular application Tata source does not have LFI it can have RFI and it can call for this. Obviously RFI in order to get RFI it may have LFI as well but it can have this RFI present. So RFI can happen in multiple ways using HTTP as well as using like SMB like a network drive location or something like that. So let's just try and see what this particular exploit actually is speaking about. So what we'll do is we'll do just do so exploit M and we'll just do something like okay mirror it into our working directory. Let's just look into that and we do have this page present over here and it says if you read through it there are multiple things it says like it's not properly sanitized and a remote attacker can include a file named wp load php into this particular page so this is what the page actually looks like and it says hackers website over here so let's just copy this thing in our cherry tree and let's just modify it a bit so hackers website so let's just remove that and add our website over here 10 10 14 12 this is my attack machines ip address i'll just give the port as 8000 because that, that's where i'll run the http python http page so let's just do that quickly python 3 m switch for http server let's just hit enter and this is where it's running 8000 and now what i'll give is i'll just give the file name probably like mutatednuts.txt or probably it mentions that you need to have a file which is this thing so let's just copy this thing and let's just try and see if this thing actually works right let's just confirm the vulnerability first okay we do have this we do have the host wp content so i think we can just give something like 
web services wp content is already present over here so let's just do that and have this plugins copied you all getting my point right because already you all have this thing present over here and i hope you'll get it okay so it says requested url was not found or something like that okay i added wp content twice my bad so let's just do this and we do see a get request over here and it says wp load php wp load php so in short the get request was with wp load php twice so my guess is that we have to add this we don't have to add this wp load php over here it's going to actually append it later so let's just do this and now we got a wp load php so what we'll try to do is we'll try to get this wp load php file running so earlier we did come across that php reverse shell so we can use that from pen test monkey click this php reverse shell over here go to raw copy it or you can do a git clone as well so we need to enter something like wp load dot php because that's what the file name should be present and we have to only modify it says change this over here so just modify this ip address and the port number so we'll give 10 10 14.12 as well as the port that is 4444 you can give any other port non-standard port so we do have this http running over here and this thing may take some time i think we'll just close it for now or leave it running i guess okay so let's just start a netcat listener over here if you guys don't know what netcat is it's an you know connection tool you can establish a connection from the attack machine to that sorry target machine to the attack machine and over here we'll be using a netcat with the n switch for numeric ips only we'll be giving a v for verbus output we'll be giving l for listening mode and we'll be giving p for the port number that is 4444 because that's what we are entering in our particular wp load php file so we have created this python web server over here and this is in the exploit directory and in the exploit directory over here we do have this wp load php file so i think we are good to go so what we can do is we do have a netcat listener running let's just hit enter over here and look over here and we see that we do have a shell present so if we do who am i we are www data okay so what we can do is quickly we can check for sudo l and we do see we can run something over here as on huma user not root unfortunately so before that we'll just quickly go and upgrade our shell we do we do know that there is python present so let's just use python c c is for command and import pty so this is how you're going to upgrade the shell this are not my command so you can check on google how to upgrade uh, linux shells so pty.spawn can do bin bash okay let's just hit enter and we do see we get something over here right so this is not done yet press ctrl z and then press std5 sorry stty raw echo and then press fg and then hit enter so you all will not be able to see that in the screen on the screen but i'm just doing it it's at the back end fg and i'll just press enter i do get this nc nvlp on its own and now i'll just type re reset and it says terminal type so you can enter x term i guess so yeah we do have this thing present away if you do who am i okay so now what we'll try to do is we'll just look at sudo okay we'll just go back to the, sorry go to the home directory first and we'll just look at this we do have a username on numa i guess so we can even check for cat etc password for all the users and we do have this onuma user present over here so probably we need to escalate to this onuma guy so let's just go to onuma and see if we can get a flag first but we do not have access over there because it says we do not have this permission because we belong to this group over here that is others we do not belong to the onuma's group as well so let's just do sudo l it says something like you can use uh ww data can run this command uh, as onuma user without giving any password this is the binary which we can use bin tar so what we can do is quickly we can go to gtfo bins and we can just type tar over here and we do have this tar present not these things so we do have something over here, it says shell 
and what we can look for is the pseudo one because over here i think we can just close these things okay we do have this thing present over here which we can give you know something like pseudo and then the use switch because we are not doing a pseudo as root if you do as root we do not require this use switch so we require something like onuma over here onuma and then we can give this bin tar or we can give tar as well so we need to give this entire thing but don't copy the entire path but give this thing we didn't give tar right the bin tar is already present so i don't think we need to give that so if you do this obviously this thing got you know it's gone over there on the left side it is present i have pasted it properly but it's so uh, overwriting or something like that so if you do that it says benta removing leading lines from num member names if i do who am i now it says onuma so what we'll try to do is we'll just try to quickly upgrade the shell as well and we don't have to enter http or echo so we do have this uh thing we can just go and go to the home directory and onuma and we can get the user txt flag we can obviously check for sudo l over here but it'll ask for password that's not the way to go you can check out for web config files and see if there are any password you can try for that but this is not the way in this particular box and we can also look at the os version over here that is you do have this 32 bit os present over here so we do have this os and probably it will be useful later so another thing we can just do a linum scan so let's just try to get this particular file into our http server directory so let's just do linum dot sh locate i already have this tool present in my system so i hope you guys can like you all can get it from github as well i hope you all know what linum does so i do have this file present let's just go to the tmp directory let's just do wget and let's just get this particular file that is lin inum.sh and let's just do chmod 777 you can do 777 because it's on the target machine itself so let's just try to run it so it may take some time to run obviously we do have that you know this onuma user and all these kind of things interesting thing over here is in cron tabs you don't find anything interesting but over here in the system timers there is something which says backup timer passed so many minutes ago and left this usually we do see like backup timers like system timers everything so we do have something like backup or timer over here that's it that's the only interesting thing in this linear scan i guess and there may be few which says like a uh, few files modified in last few minutes or something like that so let's just wait for it i think that's done in the thorough scan so you all can run that as well and it will get probably few files like you know some directory or temp files which are being created and we do see that we do have this another backups file over here that is onuma www dev backup and if you see the date and the time it actually looks like recent so probably possibly there's a cron job running or something like that so we can confirm that since we already know the os version that is 32 bit right which we saw earlier so we can do another thing that is locate for pspy 32s i already have this tool present in my system so you all can get it from github if you guys don't know what this tool is so let's just try to use wget again over here and we'll just get the pspy file so this pspy is actually going to sniff uh, for you know things like processes and if you check out the uh, github page it's going to monitor linux process what are going to run like cron jobs or something like some scheduled jobs are present right every two minutes is going to run every five minutes we have seen multiple privilege escalation based on cron jobs right so this is how it's going to sniff that and it's going to output it to us that hey you know what this particular job that it says check uh, backup files it's running every two minutes it's running every one minute and so on so since uh, we are giving this pspy 32s because uh, this is a smaller version actually because this is a large version it takes time to transfer to the target machine so you can use this as well not an issue but we, I usually use this and if the S version does not work I use this so same with 64 bit if the OS is 64 bit the target machine so I'll be using this and this particular thing over here okay so this is what it's going to do we already have this PSV file present so let's just ch mod it with 777 as well and let's just try and run this particular pspy file so let's just do that 32s 
Now, if you do that, we do see there are like few things running over here. And just to give an overview, we did run that uh, bin, sorry, that tar uh, privilege escalation, right? That was actually executed as UID 1000. So that UID 1000 is, I think, for the user on Uma. So you can try and see and try to wait for this. I'll just quickly pause the video and let, you know, resume back when there is there is something popped up over here. So we do see something, you know, coming up over here. That is the backup error file that's running bin bash. So probably there was some system timer, which we did see earlier in Linenum, right? So probably there's some backup error file running and that was a timer for this. And it's running probably, I think at around 27 or something minutes so if you see over here we do have this particular thing present as well so it's running multiple commands like sudo onumo onuma sorry and it's running some uh, additional tar commands over here and there are multiple things so obviously we can just take this thing and we can just do a interesting things to look at. so this is what i follow usually i just take that linum scan and if i find something interesting i take it and paste it over here and maybe check it later like on like in one go okay so in short there's some backup thing done over here and we can try to check out for this particular file and it looks like it was executed somewhere around this 27 minute mark and we can just do a control z over here and we can just try to run the linum scan as well and like we can just check out for that system timer okay so the system timer i think it was mentioned over here cron jobs daily i'm not sure if the backup error i don't think the backup error was present over here okay we do have the system timer and it says past one minute 26 seconds ago so probably three and a half minutes more remaining so we'll just try to close this and we'll just try to look at the date date is probably like uh, this thing over here so probably another after three minutes so 11 33 i think it's gonna run the next backup error scan so it may take time so probably it's running every three minutes like 33 oh, and then probably it will run somewhere around 38 yeah so that's how it's gonna do every five minutes so you can have a look and keep this uh, psp by scal running and see what it's actually doing but uh, let's just quickly look at this backup error file now and if we see if uh, first thing we'll just see if we have read access to it or not so we can do lsla over here and get this thing done and we do have read and execute access so let's just do cat to this particular backup error file and we do see we have a bin bash file over here with uh, some version number earlier obviously if there's some version number probably you can check and search ploid or you can take a google look over there like you know you can check out an exploit db or something but that's not the way i think this is some custom file created so what we'll try to do is we'll just create this backup dot sh file over here and let's just copy this contents and we do have this thing present over here this uh, script may look a bit confusing at first but in short the comments are present over there. it's creating few variables and it's going to print out something this is not very useful actually so this thing over here it says clean up from last time it's going to create uh, you know delete some directories using the r switch and all these things it's going to delete few files from the previous time it's going to run because it's going to keep running every five minutes right so it's going to delete the previous uh, directories and it says uh, it's going to back up the onuma website files and into some tar files so it's going to create a tar file and it's going to back up some you know some files over here so we'll just look into that in a bit and it's going to have a sleep done for 30 seconds and basically after that it's going to create a directory it's not going to go over here the function is present over here but it's not being called the function is just created over here so it's going to go over here to this check it's going to create a check directory it's going to unzip this file because this x switch is present for extract it's going to unzip that file and output it to check and later on it's going to do a check over here so in short it's going to do a difference between two directories one is the base directory and one is this and if it finds a difference between these two directories it's going to go over here if it does not find any difference it's going to come over here so this is how it's going to work and what we can do is we can just quickly test this particular thing out how it's actually working so first we'll just have a copy of this thing done over here 
we'll just rename it to back sh that's it just keep it simple and we'll just try and see try to modify all these th uh, things over here this things we can just ignore it i don't think we require this print bdi just trying to print a line with 72 dashes so we'll just leave that aside so we'll just go to base base dir just to make it simple since it's a beginner friendly videos if you guys are already aware so you can skip this thing but it says base directory over here and it says base directory over here. so i'll just copy this thing over here make sure you obey the uh, these spaces over here and you know don't try to merge it so we do have temp file temp file is this particular file so first thing we'll just fill up this so it says bkb directory so this is what the backups directory looks like so let's just have this thing done and it says backup directory again over here so let's just have that done as well tmp directory so let's just get this thing over here this thing it's actually creating some random uh, file and it's gonna do a hash with it this is what it's gonna do and in short the output of this thing would look something like a random sha1 sum so that means it's going to create a file sha1 sum it's going to do of that it's going to create a value so so we can just mention something like random hash value so just just to make things simpler to understand so we have this tmp directory over here we can copy this thing we can paste this thing over here and also we do have tmp directory over here so let's just paste this so in short, it's trying to create over here cleanup from Russia. It's trying to remove all the files from TMP directory, which is a hidden file, which starts from dot that is hidden. And it's going to create or delete all the files. That is this random hash value. And it's going to do a check over here. So let's just copy the check as well. It says TMP file. So TMP file is this file. So it's going to create a backup, which we had already placed, right? So it's going to take the contents of this directory. That is the HTML where our web server is running. The whole application is running, right? The web services and everything is running over there. It's going to take that and it's going to actually, it's going to take it and zip it to this particular file over here. Okay. So this is what it's going to do. And it's going to create this random hash value file because the C switch is mentioned. So compress and V for verbs file. It's going to list down the files, I guess. So this is what it's going to do over here. Then it's going to sleep for 30 seconds. And we're like, hey, and this is where we are going to attack. Attack in this time frame. So this is where we are actually going to attack. And what we'll try to do is we'll try to modify this particular hash value with some file of our own. So we'll just try to modify this, suppose with some malicious file. And when this will do it, okay, then it will come over here, it will create another directory that is check. And then it's gonna unzip this particular hash value file. And it's gonna output it to this check directory. Sorry, this check directory over here. So it's gonna output it over here. And later on, it's gonna go to this particular, it's gonna call this function that is this. And it's going to do a difference that is base directory. The base directory is nothing but this thing over here. So if you are familiar with coding, uh, that's great. But I'm just trying to show because trying to bake it down. I don't know. I see this things. You obviously create variables to make things easier, but I'm just trying to break it out and you know, it's so that it's not confusing. So we have the check directory. So we have check over here and there are no spaces. So we will not give space as well. And the base directory again. So the base directory again is this thing over here. So this is what it's doing over here. And it's trying to create a difference between the actual VAR HTML directory and the one which is this directory where this particular file was actually unzipped. Okay. So this file TMP file, which was created earlier using this using this particular thing it's going to actually unzip over here and then it's going to do a check between these two things and if it finds something different it's going to go to this particular loop over here and if it does not find any difference like in general cases it's going to go over here and delete all these directory files okay so now what we'll try to do is we'll just try and copy this thing integrity check and to see how this thing actually works so let's just create another file that is check sh and before that we can give bin bash and we can paste this so we have difference over here we do have difference tool in our kali machine as well so if we just do which diff we do have this user bin diff over there user bin diff 
so we'll just leave it as it is it's r so we'll what we'll try to do is we'll create two uh, directory paths so we don't need to add this vr because this thing would go in my root directory in my machine i just want to add create a file over here itself so let's just create a folder or what we can do is we can just create mkdir and give the p switch so that it creates all folders if it is not present i'll not give this thing make sure you don't give that and www.html so i'll just give this i do have this directory and we'll create another directory that is var2 www.html i think we'll just create vr1 i guess one is better so one and two we do create that we'll just remove that uh, var directory okay so now if we see we do have vr1 vr2 created and we do have this entire path present over here so we do have that directory created and we'll just enter this mutated nuts php7 file in both of these directories let's just copy it over here and let's just copy it over here as well so we do have both the directories both have the same file contents that is mutated nuts php so now what we'll try to do is we'll just try to remove this thing first we'll have we'll compare uh, the directory one with directory two so we'll just delete this thing as well with directory 2 vr directory 2 so we'll compare these two directories and now since they are same we'll just remove this i don't think we require this over here so we have this printf statement we can remove this last line as well don't think we require this and over here in printf we can just enter something like uh we are okay keep it simple we are in the then statement okay so in short we are saying that we are in the den statement that is this then and we are in the else so if else so i hope you guys know a bit about programming so if this thing works if there is a difference then go over here and exit with code 2 if there is no difference then go over here and exit with code 0 the code 0 and 2 are not really that important because code 0 is like no errors 2 is like some error or something like that and it's like fi so like n that's it over here we can just enter something like else statement so we can clear this thing up as well don't require this so in short if there is some difference over here it's gonna go in this loop if it is there is no difference over here these two are identical this will go over here okay obviously this vr1 is not identical but the contents of this particular directory that's what it's looking at so what we'll try to do is we'll try to run this check sh file we'll just chmod it 744 check dot sh and we'll try to run this check sh file now considering that this directory both the directories are same because i have placed that mutated nuts mutated nuts php7 sorry file both in both the directories so it should be same it should actually give me that we are in the else statement okay so this thing worked fine this is what is happening in our particular backup error file that is every time it's going to do obviously every time it's going to unzip and zip and we are not going to modify any that tm tar file where did it go tar file so it's got, always going to go over here it's going to delete this check file and all this kind of thing it's going to do but we need that loop to actually go over here so that we don't get this check directory uh deleted we'll just look into this in a bit it may be a bit confusing so over here we'll just go and we have this mutated nuts php7 we'll just create a copy now we can just mention something like mutated nuts and two so we do have this file we have an additional file now now this vr2 and vr1 is not the same because vr2 consists of two files and vr1 consists of one mutated nuts php7 file itself you can test it with any file i'm just trying to show you all how this thing is actually working so if you do check sh again it says we are in the den statement now so that means we successfully come into this den statement which we require in this particular box over here so in order to do this we need to somehow modify this vr tmp random hash value file and we need to create a content with vr ww html itself because if it's going to do a difference from this particular original directory and the check directory so whatever file you upload over here it will actually should be present in this particular path if you enter some file that just here itself muted and nuts 
something like that so that's not going to work because actual code over here the original code is actually base directory as well sorry the base directory comes over here so the base directory will come by default that is this thing will come my bad this thing will come and then probably you can enter any file which you want to create so what we'll try what we are trying to do is we're trying to create a oh sorry we're trying to create uh, some suid file or something like that so whatever it will be extracted to this particular check directory over here that executable set uid file can be executed and probably will get a root shell this is what we are trying to do main purpose of all this thing so let's just try and quickly uh, actually just okay we can just do sudo bash because we require a root shell before that we can try and create this particular uh, an suid file so why we require a root file to be created is because that tar okay that will just come into that in a bit so before that we'll just create an suid file so let's just go over here simple suid file simple suid bash file so let's just do that we got this article over here which will show that so let's just create a file first we don't require these two things anymore we can leave it or just delete create a new file that is muted in nuts.c so we'll create a c file first because we are creating a set uid file and let's just go below and probably we'll get over your how to create this uh, suid file probably we'll have to type it in but uh, yeah we do have this file over here so let's just do include stdio.h okay let's try to paste this over here we need h okay sys types dot h okay int main creating a function main set uid you are setting your uid to the get effective uid this is the effective uid which you are going to set it to and then later on we are going to call a system command that is bin bash so you can verify the bash as well in the target machine that if it's the same thing but yes i'm aware it's same so let's just do which bash bin bash okay good so we do have this thing present over here bin bash and next thing we can do is return zero as well let's just enter whatever is present over there i'm not entering anything on my own it's present over here and we need to save it as obviously c and then later on compile it over here but if we try to compile this muted not c why sorry if we try to do this gcc muted mutated nuts.c file and output it to muted in nuts itself so this thing will give you a warning but oh, okay that's fine it's going to give a warning and it's going to compile that file but if you do a file against muted in nuts it's going to create a 64-bit object that is 64-bit uh, executable file so over here we do have 32-bit itself so we need to create a 32-bit file for this so for that you need to give G gcc and you need to give the m32 switch over here to do that and that's how it's going to create same warning ignore the warning it's just a warning no it's not an error or something sorry and uh, also it can have file and let's do a file muted in nuts and you see that it's 32 bit now so that means we have the 32 bit file set and what uh, okay so we have this file set now we need to have a root shell done and if you guys get an error over there with gcc you'll have to it will say some file missing or uh, some module missing or some library missing so probably you have to get that uh, gcc multilib installed so once you install that that error would go away so make sure you all do that uh, as well okay so now what we'll try to do is we'll just convert this into a root shell because we have to do a few things so i'm root now over here and what we'll try to do is we'll just try to create two directory first sorry we'll try to create a directory first mkdir with the p switch that is your var and www html we need to create this directory because once it's gonna you know trying to actually extract the files 
it's going to extract the files over here in the check so whenever this thing check is happening over here the base directory comes as well this is the base directory which is present over here, that is this so this is also present so we need to create our own thing over here so that whenever it executes as check over here because then this thing would add up over here as well so that's why we are trying to do that create this thing and if you do lsla now we do have this as a root the directory created we are and now what we can do is we can have this mutated nuts executable file which we had created earlier we can copy that into the directory that is this as mutated nuts itself okay so let's just go to this particular directory over here and if you do lsla we see that we do have this uh, thing present as root. So this is what we require. The important thing is in order to create a tar file, we require this thing to be root because if it is a user named Kali or some other user in the target machine, when we are going to transfer it, it's going to actually be the user as Onuma. Onuma, sorry, my bad. So it's not going to be as the root user, but if it's actually root, it's like, okay, root, the UID is zero. So that's going to be the same thing over here as well, root. Okay, we'll just look into that in a bit. So obviously if we execute that file, okay. So we have this thing as root present over here. And this is how that tar thing works, by the way. So, so we need to change this permissions over here from execute to, we need to create a SUID bit. So over here, if we go, probably it's mentioned somewhere, permissions. Okay, this is how it's gonna create. We'll create in a bit easier way. So we can just do chmod. We can give four at first and seven. And since this is already, uh, sorry, it's already five. Like this is five and this is five. Let's just leave it as it is. So we do have uh, four, seven, and we'll give five, five. Obviously there are four now because this four is actually for the set UID which we will create over here and see how it changes. So let's just do muted and nuts. And let's just do LSLA again. And we do have this SUID file present. Two things, important things over here. Make sure you have this S set UID file present as well as make sure you have this X switch present because we'll belong to the others group and we need to execute that binary, right? So make sure you have this thing present. And this is, you know, a risky thing to have it on your system. So ensure like you delete it as well later on once the job is done. Okay, so we do have this uh, file present. Let's just go back to this exploit directory. Now we can use this particular uh, command over here. We'll just try to use the same command. Don't use this Onuma and all these things. Just use this thing. And we need to give the file name, some file name, and we need to give that location. So we'll just give the same thing over here. We'll just give the file name as mutated. Okay, maybe we'll just give something like kindly subscribe. And then we'll give something like, okay, we need to give this VR HTML. So this is what we need to zip. So let's just do that and see and it is done so we do have the zip file created over here so if you open this kindly subscribe we do have a www folder created we do have a html directory created over here and also we do have this because this thing is from vr www html so we do have all the things present we do have the muted nuts also if we look at the permissions it's a root root over here so what we'll try to do is we'll just we have created that suid file and we'll just try and go back to our shell over here and we'll try to create this particular thing we'll just see okay in two minutes is going to actually launch so what we'll try to because the attack was 33 and 38 i guess right so probably we'll just go to the var tmp directory and then we'll just do wget over here 10 10 14 12 attack machines ip address port where that uh, this thing is running and we'll give kindly subscribe so we do have the file present over here now what we'll try to do is since this thing we have zipped the file right so now this actual script backup will try to zip this file with this random hash value so when it goes to sleep over here we will try to copy the contents from this file to that random hash value file we'll just close this to the hash value file and then later when it comes over here it's going to extract that random hash value file to this check directory and later on it's going to call for this so once it calls for this it will compare this with our malicious file because our malicious file would be over here that is our mutated nuts file over here 
So once it does that, it will find a difference and it will go to this loop and it will not delete this. And we can try and execute that SUID file. So this is what we're trying to do. So hopefully that thing happens. So let's just do an LSLA. We do have this kindly subscribe over here. So let's just leave it as it is. We'll just do date. Let's just look at a 33 thing to hit. SLA. So this thing is as Onuma, so that's fine because, okay, we'll just look into that in a bit. I guess the timer is almost done. So if we see over here, we do have this TMP file created. Now quickly, we have to copy the contents from this in that 30 seconds window to this particular file over here. So this, so in short, we copied. And now if we look at the file size, it is the same as this kindly subscribe. Over here, the file size was different. Over here, it's same. So now again, if we do LSLA and if we check out the time, so 23 itself, so there is another 10 seconds or something, probably there'll be a check directory created. So if you do date and a check directory is created over here. And if you do LSLA again, this check directory still is present. That means we successfully bypassed this, uh, sorry, we actually, uh, the script actually did find a difference and it came over here where it's not gonna delete that check directory. Over here, it's gonna actually delete this check directory. As soon as this, uh, it does not find any difference, it's gonna delete this particular directory. So this is how we actually have this check directory present. And if we go to the check directory now, and this is present as root, why? Because over here, this Onuma file was created as a user Onuma. Sorry, this file was created as user Onuma, the temporary file. Okay, we'll just get into that in a bit. We'll just get a root shell probably. So we'll just, okay, I don't think we require this, but yeah. So let's just go to, we are in check. So we do have this VR, which we had created, right? You can try uh, creating a file sorry, the kind of this, this particular TAR file without VR and it's not gonna work. So I can try that if you all want. And we can go to www. We do have HTML as well. And now we do have this mutated nuts, sorry, mutated nuts execute, executable file with set UID as root. And we do have root permissions over here, even if we belong to others group, sorry, we can execute this file. So let's just try to do that quickly and we are over here as root. So this is how we create a bin bash shell. And if we do, who am I? We are over here as root. If we go to our root directory over here, we are, we can very well read this root txt file. Okay, so another thing is quickly, what is happening is if you come back over here, let's just go back a few directories. Okay, we need to get back again. So we have few like a uh, little time over here, right? So what we will try to do is we'll just try to take this over here and take this script over here. Okay. Okay, so we do get this uh, first thing. It's gonna create a TAR file with the random hash value with the contents that is from VR HTML. So this is what is that TMP file, the SHA sum. And this is the file which is it's creating. Then we got a 30 seconds window, right? It, it's attack in this time frame. What we did was we took this particular file and we copied it with this. We uh, you know actually renamed the file. So in short, this script actually has that retention of this variable, the same variable over here. So when it's gonna try to extract it as well, it's gonna use the same variable over here and it's gonna output it to this particular check directly. So in short, whatever we copied from kindly subscribe went to this particular file over here. That's why the file size is same. Then later on, it tried to extract this particular thing and output it to this check directly over here. So once it did that, we obviously there was a difference, right? Because we are HTML was different. The size also was different of this particular file. It was like around, it was a larger file size, which we saw earlier, right? It was a larger file size. Okay, where is it? Okay, if you see over here, the file size is actually very large. So obviously there is a difference between this these two things over here. 
because this thing contains all obviously the web server or something which are we had that you know tata source web uh, the page which we had seen earlier all those th kind of things it does not have that mutated nuts set uid file so that's why there is a difference over here and which we had seen earlier right and in short there was a difference and we you know came into this loop which is not going to do anything it's just going to create some uh, error and it's going to do something i think you can read a root flag as well using this but you can you can try that but we needed a shell so we got into this so that means it did not delete our check directory so we could go to our check directory, which was unzipped, and we could execute that root, uh, sorry, muted and nuts executable file over there, set UID file. So this is how we got root in this particular box. It was a bit tricky and a bit challenging. So this was something different, I guess. And there was a like small gap, like 30 seconds gap, I guess, time frame where you could do and execute this attack successfully. So this was the box and you know initially obviously we did actually get into it using two methods using the monstra, uh, the f directory traversal as well as the file upload vulnerability then we used that WP scan I think that w WP scan might have gotten over okay this is what the scan looks like in the end if you all like colors so this is what it says out of date so you can check for this readme text txt file which we had seen earlier so you can use rfi and get into the box and once you get into the box you can check out this backup error script and try to modify and use tar and that's how we got into this particular thing okay so this was the box if you guys like this video do give a thumbs up and uh, do subscribe for more upcoming videos if you all have any queries do drop it in the comments below if you all have any suggestions i should have done things a bit different or something like that so okay thanks a lot